Hi, I'm Jeannie Sims, a certified asthma educator for Breathe Pennsylvania, and I welcome you to this webinar on Not All Wheezing is Asthma. I'd like to just take a brief moment and talk to you a little bit about Breathe Pennsylvania, our programs and services. Breathe Pennsylvania is a nonprofit organization in a 10 county service area of Western Pennsylvania. We provide programs in person, virtual live, and on recorded platforms. The School As Initiative program is involved in three settings, the home, the school, and the community. In addition to the School Asthma Initiative, we have a direct lung disease education, sleep apnea, a TB conference on a yearly basis, asthma day on every other year for children ages five to 10 in their families, Smokeless Saturday, and this is a program for any student caught on campus with a tobacco product. Smoke Free for Life for adults who want to quit. There is no potential conflict of interest, no commercial support for this activity. There is no endorsement by Breathe Pennsylvania for any commercial product. The information in this PowerPoint is general in nature and for information and educational purposes only. It is not meant to give specific medical advice, recommendations, diagnosis, or treatment. Today, we're gonna to discuss three things. We're gonna talk about how the lungs work, what happens during an asthma attack, and then look at, are we dealing with asthma or vocal cord dysfunction, VCD? because not all wheezing is asthma. Conditions that can cause coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath can be very confusing. In infants and children, it might, the wheezing may be caused by allergic rhinitis, vocal cord dysfunction, or what is known as VCD, swallowing problems, obstruction of the large or small airways, tumors or enlarged lymph nodes, or cystic fibrosis. Today, we're gonna to look at vocal cord dysfunction. This is something that we see a lot and have questions from many of our parents who have children or teens who are athletes. Let's start off with a review of our lungs. Let's take a walk through the respiratory system in order to better understand how our lungs work and the changes that occur during asthma. We take air in through the nose and the mouth. It travels down our throat into the first large airway, the trachea. The trachea then splits into two large airways, one in each lung called bronchi. The bronchi continue to split and narrow and get smaller into bronchioles, which then terminate or end with air sacs or alveoli. Here's where the blood picks up the oxygen, carries it to the heart, and the heart pumps it to all parts of the body. It returns then to the lungs and exits lungs in the same path, alveoli to bronchial to bronchi to trachea, up through the throat and out of the nose and the mouth. Why is vocal cord dysfunction often misdiagnosed as asthma? Well, the symptoms and the triggers can be similar. Approximately 40% of the people with VCD will have asthma too. What happens during an asthma attack in the airways? Well, airway muscles tighten, excess mucus is produced, and the airway walls swell. So if you look to the pictures to the right, you can see the top right hand airway affected by asthma and how the air space is so narrow. But then you look to the left and you see the airway unimpacted by asthma. It helps us to appreciate why we might hear that wheeze or a person might cough to try to remove that mucus from their airways. While asthma is caused by these three changes in your lungs, vocal cord dysfunction is caused by spasms in the vocal cords that restrict airflow and lead to difficulty in breathing. Let's take a closer look at vocal cord dysfunction. 
It occurs when one or both vocal cords don't close correctly when a person's breathing in. It can feel like an asthma attack. It's referred to as paradoxical vocal forward motion or PVFM. It can occur with asthma in 40% of the cases. Often vocal cord dysfunction diagnoses are missed. However, once it is correctly diagnosed, a treatment plan can be started to address the symptoms and cure it. Unlike with asthma, there's still no cure. Often VCD is diagnosed after other diseases are ruled out. Often it's considered in children with difficult to treat asthma, as well as in athletes whose exercise induced asthma symptoms fail to respond to therapy. A reported difference is during an asthma attack, the symptoms include difficulty in exhaling. And with VCD, it's the opposite. The symptoms include difficulty inhaling. To diagnose VCD, a scope is inserted into the nose to view vocal cord fold movement and determine if there's any abnormalities. Or they may use a video stroboscope, a similar procedure, using a video and a strobe light to record movement. Specialists are looking for abnormal movement, signs of vocal cord swelling, or evidence of an irritation or inflammation. Vocal cord dysfunction usually involves only one trigger compared to asthma, which often involves multiple triggers. Some of the common triggers include gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, exercise, strong odors such as chemicals used for cleaning or for chlorinating pools, smoke, personal care products like perfume, postnatal drip or allergy to airborne particles, strong emotion, or voice overuse. Symptoms might include throat or chest tightness, noisy inhalation, difficulty getting air in, a feeling like the throat's closing or a feeling of being strangled, intermittent shortness of breath, chronic cough, where there's a voice change or an inability to speak. Treatment for BCD can include an anti-reflux medication to reduce reflux, speech therapy to help teach breathing exercises and improve breathing techniques relaxation and stress reduction to support the recovery, and when dealing with both VCD and asthma, just a clearer understanding of the differences between the two, so that if it is asthma, to use a rescue inhaler, or if it's VCD, to use breathing exercises. Thank you for joining me today for this short webinar. I hope it encourages you to ask questions. If you would like additional educational video support on these topics, understanding asthma and allergies, understanding my child's asthma inhaler medications and devices, peak flow meters and exercise, keeping cool at school with asthma, just contact Breathe Pennsylvania and we can share a link with you. As one of Breathe Pennsylvania's certified asthma educators, I'm available to assist you with questions regarding your child's asthma. Please feel free to call or email. Thank you. Stay safe and stay well.